Hello, I'm Jackie Marson and welcome to this week's edition of Love Decoded, brought to you by eHarmony, the site that takes finding love seriously. If you're fascinated by the science of love, decoding the mysteries of attraction and unravelling our ideas of romance, then this is the show for you. Now this week I'm very excited to say we're going to be discussing dating deal breakers, a topic that I think is endlessly fascinating. So we'll be answering your questions throughout the show um, so please join in with the conversation in the comments now um, and also I want you today to kind of send in what's your most unusual deal breaker either that you have ever had or that you've ever heard about because there's some crazy ones out there ridiculous ones and it's good to bring some humor to it so have you ever ended a relationship over something small that you just couldn't ignore. Um, we would love to hear your stories. Just send in one word if you want, like, you know, shoes, hair, sandwich. Uh, so today I'm joined by eHarmony's in-house relationship expert, Rachel Lloyd, and claimed makeup artist and life coach, Lee Pycroft. Rachel and Lee, welcome to today's show. Thank you. It's lovely Hi. to be here. Thank you very much. Juicy, juicy topic. It's isn't a it a juicy great topic? Great topic, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I thought we should get so much I hope, on this today. And we're all going to be really honest, aren't we, about our own deal? Absolutely. Yes, yes. we're going to try. All about. Yes. yes. <laughs> so we'll come to that in just a minute. Yes. Like, we'll, we'll just open it with a bit mm. of setting this up in a bit of theory. Lee, yes. um, I mean, we all have probably, or many people have this idea of a type, that's my yes. type, and it's this and the other. Where does that differ from a deal breaker? And when is that kind mm. of, when does it become unhelpful? Okay, so I think that firstly you can have a type, but I think when people talk about types, they make it quite general. Mm. And I think that really knowing what you want to create in a relationship is really important. So you'd have your must-haves, so you might have your type of person, what things in common, values, that kind of thing. And then your must-have-nots, which are really your deal-breakers. And I think that can change depending on what life phase you're at. Now, if we're talking about dating, we're really looking at just exploring whether someone is right for us and whether we're right for them. So, I mean, it can be, you know, anything from sort of online, for example, someone might tell a fib about on their profile or something like that, which happened to me. Um, well, so wait, think, wait, wait, you yes. told a fib or you no, they caught out a fib? I told, no, I didn't tell a fib. <laughs> Jackie. No, they told a fib, actually. So I remember dating someone and uh, it all looked great online. And then when we'd been seeing each other for a little bit, I saw his passport in his <laughs> what, sitting you mean room. You found oh, his passport. I was going to say, well, actually, snooping well, no, snooping. But it was actually just there and I sort of flicked it open and then the date was very different. I thought, no, why would you do Wait, wait, the date of birth? Yes, date of birth. about his age. Yes, done about his age, yeah. exactly, exactly. Which, of course, can happen. So I think the deal breakers really are what the deal breakers are maybe when you're first starting dating and then once you get into the relationship the things that you really must have not you know you must have not because it's unhealthy for you yes and it's not in alignment with your values yes yes so i thought researching this topic i thought that really there's two different kind of deal breakers mm. to mm. there are those kind of you were talking about that are about compatibility about your values yes let's yes. call them maybe almost like the sensible deal breakers yes. or deal makers yeah. that's more positive way of yeah breaking. like deal makers deal makers mm -hmm. yeah. but then to me over the years with my clients with my friends with myself mm. i think w another thing to talk about today that's that's got more humor attached to it is the way where we have these sort of slightly ridiculous ludicrous things that are often about superficiality about yes. fashion <laughs> about what we think our friends will think yes and it's those i want to unearth a bit so mm. Let me ask you now, let's be honest, if we're asking people to send those in, Rachel, what... what Why would... did I have to <laughs> Um, Looking back, you can go back over many As I look years. back, I'm giggling because I'm remembering I went on a date once with a guy that... He was fine, slightly bad genes when he got to the date, but then he started talking about his gerbil. And he was really attached to this gerbil. And after the date, he texted me a picture of him and his gerbil. Did he give it a really human name? Yeah. Like Steve it was like, or yeah, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. so, you know, d yeah. and I tried to uh, sort of set up for a second date because I thought in every other respect, you know, and it's mm. nice that he has this fondness for this creature. Yeah. yeah. But I couldn't, uh, in the end, it just felt a bit too weird too early. It might be a bit too much competition, <laughs> <to> gerbil. <laughs> You see, but that, that's it, because some of them are ludicrous. Your animal love with them. Oh, how cute. He I'm loves so his sorry about that. Yeah. But it's about the meaning it mm, holds to you. Course, and that's yes. a real area for you, isn't it, Lee? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's like the association you have yeah. with the past. 
Because everything, yes. every emotion we have will have an association to a past event. You know, and I think the deal breakers suddenly it can be just something that's really irritating. I have a thing about if someone has a really high pitched voice, ah. then that just doesn't, I can't, it just doesn't resonate with me. It's really interesting. I don't take them seriously. Now, where's that come from? Yeah. Uh, my friend once went on, again, another internet date, not eHarmony, mm. of course, because they would be more intelligently matched. But she went on a date and went to pick up this guy that she hadn't spoken to, obviously, they'd emailed, and mm. he had a really, really squeaky voice. And I'm, I'm, so, I mean, I hope she's not watching because she'll sort of might strangle me for telling this story. But as he went, hi, and went to get in the car, she just said, stand back a minute, and literally floored it and drove off. I mean, <laughs> oh, that was so unkind. Terrible. But these things can be ridiculous and very superficial. Very superficial, exactly, um, yeah. And yeah. I guess, you know, in a way, we really need to think about, like, the, the, the deal makers, because deal yes. breakers are things that can be adapted or worked with, or, or they might just be silly exactly. old prejudices, you know? Yeah, because what I was thinking about this is, like, we are not, it's not genetic that we have things yeah. that are on lots of people's That's tops so of their lists. Like, um, I looked at this uh, Psychology Today in America. They had interviewed thousands of people. Top of the list for women was mm. uh, bad table manners and poor hygiene. And I kind of yeah, thought, well, they're, hygiene, not, they're yeah. not genetic things that you might not shower enough or that you talk with your mouth mm. open with food in it. Mm. So actually, they're habits. They've been learned. It's a learned behaviour, isn't it? You could yeah. relearn that. In fact, yeah. I know someone whose girlfriend yeah. fell in love with this woman. She said to him, I can't bear it, you eat with your mouth open. And he changed it immediately. Mm. And now they're having a fantastic relationship. Mm. So it's kind of like one of the things I wanted to put out there today is that, again, we, we maybe make our list. We look at those deal breakers and kind of think, can I, can I creatively, imaginatively I see around that? Or once we got to the point where we had enough communication, could we talk about it? Have you ever yeah. examples of, do you talk to clients about that, Lee? Yes, I do. But I think, because I think it can be very easy to be very set in what you want. Yes. And not have that flexibility. And I think we live in a culture where we're very visual, a lot of people, and they'll sort of, especially online, you'll look at how someone yes. looks yes. and what they represent to you. But I think that, you know, once you actually start digging a little deeper and really figure out what it is you want to create and your must-haves and your must-have-nots, things like if someone has a, a drink problem, that's a far more deep-rooted yes. issue. Yes. Rather than someone who maybe chews with a mouth open or maybe isn't particularly stylishly dressed but I think there's a very big um, thing around really taking responsibility for who you are in the relationship and what you're showing up with because it's easy to project of how everyone else should be but really what are we showing up with in order to create that relationship what are we coming into the relationship with yeah. yes I would very agree good point yeah. I think these things are often a fear of intimacy as well a fear yes. of engulfment and it's we kind of throw these things unconsciously at, mm. you know these sort of flags up Yes. Before anything has a chance to develop. So I think if there's a sort of grey area and you, you know, it's something superficial like, you know, I didn't like their genes or the way mm. that they sort of pronounce, you know, certain words, then I think it's worth going back again and really looking at your part in that. What is it yes. about, you know, why are you so hesitant? And mm. um, uh, the other thing eHarmony wise is that we have actually done research on this. Of course you have. Ta-da. Yes, yes. And our research shows that about 75% mm. of people say that they, they do have a type as such. But two thirds of people are actually in a happy long term relationship with someone that wasn't their traditional type. Yeah, I've heard that. That's very good. That, yeah. Two thirds, two -thirds mm. are in a happy relationship admit. with someone they thought wasn't their type. Exactly. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's our message today about kind of opening your imagination. Yeah. Isn't it? So, and owning your own stuff. Yeah. So they were either willing to give it a go and just keep seeing the person and work through any kind of little reservations they had until they got to know the quality of the person. Mm. Or maybe they just got to know them at work or through friends. And, of course, that's, that's a lovely way as well, organically, to meet people because you see who they really are. Yeah, and also I think you can tune in to how you feel around them. Yeah. Whereas online, you're looking at things really sort of in one yeah, dimensional, aren't you? Whereas when you're actually with someone, you can pick up on the little nuances, whether you, you know, have good communication, whether you just yeah. have that rapport with them, which I think is, you know, obviously the building blocks of a but, relationship. Yeah, when you some, develop that rapport with somebody. I would second that by saying at eHarmony, we always encourage people to get offline yes. and meet up as soon yeah. as they can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, that's 
crucial mm. because it's that human interaction. I think in a digital age, yeah. you know, it's very easy to, you know, end up just texting friends even, yeah. you know, and remain online. But actually, it's that human contact, it's yeah. the eye contact. The yeah. smell, it's, just using our senses. Absolutely. Yeah. And the smell yeah. of a person, the kind of feel of them, yeah. their skin. The voice thing, that's an interesting one because that kind of crosses <laughs> the barrier, doesn't it? That's sort of in real life. You're not going to get that online. You're not going to pick that up. Well, you're, no. you're, we did do you know. a study once on attractive accents. Um, and actually, it was, it was you know, counterintuitively, it wasn't really the sort of French yeah. or Italian accent that people sort of lusted after the most. It was um, received pronunciation. Was it? So just sort of... Really? Well, know. that's the posh kind of English. Yeah, that the like you, Jackie. Readers, like mine. <laughs> and yours, and all of us, actually. <laughs> We're all today. guilty of that. Um, so it was, but the Geordie accent actually did quite well as well. But it also it depends on trends because Cheryl Cole was on TV a lot at the time. Ah, so you know, yeah, yeah. again, these things are like shifting yeah, yeah, sounds, aren't they? Yes, yeah, totally. What becomes trendy? Yeah. So I want to go back just a tiny bit. Yeah. What you said about fear? That you yeah. use the word fear. Uh, what did you say? Fear of intimacy. Yeah, fear mm. of intimacy. I, that's been my experience with my clients. Really, the ones who have the kind of really specific and quite picky list mm. who would go on a date and immediately say like. Like, it was his not shoes. Right, yeah. He had the wrong shoes on. I go, well, yeah. what, what shoes is he meant to have? And she go, well, not trainers, not brogues, not formal polish shoes. And it was mm. like, maybe he could wear one shoe. And I'll say, okay, let's explore this. This is about mm. your fears mm. yes. of what you, intimacy and girlfriend about being hurt. Mm. So until yes. you can, uh, one, uncover them, I would say, what those rigid, rigid personal results, yeah. and then what's your vulnerability? Yeah. What are you scared of? Yeah, you're absolutely. not really going to get past them because you're using them as a barrier, aren't yeah. you? Yeah, and I think that when in relationship, you know, the reason we go into relationships is to amplify our experience of life, right? We live our life through emotion. And so when we're looking for a partner, we're looking to amplify our experience of life, aren't we? So you kind of think, well, within that, our past experience is going to impact how we show up in the present, unless we have the awareness to understand yeah. what it is we're reacting to yeah, absolutely. and take yeah. responsibility for that again. Because it's easy, we might say, you know, on a superficial level, I don't like a person's shoes or you, fit, yeah. you evoked a certain emotional reaction in you. Mm. But you've got to learn what those emotional reactions are being attributed to in the past and really clean that up before you come back into yes, yes. the present. Now, Rachel, yes. you at quote you from before you had a you had a good example about uh, you um, to share that one yeah bit. sure in the early days that you were attracted to a certain you had a type yes for many on. years I was always attracted to dark-haired guys preferably with brown eyes and wavy hair I had a real thing particularly um I was alive in the early 90s and, <laughs> no, um, no, uh, and wavy hair did it for me and um, I even at one point in my distant youth went on a French dating website <laughs> To get the just, Gallic charm. Just to try, because I thought, well, I, can, I actually went on a date to Paris, but that's a whole other story, a whole other story. <laughs> For another day, another episode. And, <laughs> and he was actually already in a relationship and he hadn't told me, so we won't go there. Mm. Wasn't he harmony, clearly. So, um, but what I realised was, well, it was all about my dad. So I was totally in love with my dad as a little girl, like he was my hero. Mm. And he had wavy, almost raven black hair. He had that sort of Welsh blood. Mm. And the other thing I noticed when I sort of thought back is he always had expensive Italian made shoes. You know, he mm. was quite glamorous. Mm, stylish. And yeah. so a man that's got those really expensive shoes and tailored clothes and that sort of thick, dark mm, yeah, hair yeah, yeah. can really trigger me. Yes. But I have to look at that now and also say, I have to look beyond that. Yes, mm. of course, that's right. Because yeah, that's yeah, just yeah. an automatic reaction. And actually, that doesn't mean that that's the best person for me. It yeah, depends what they have to offer. And that's where the self-awareness comes yeah. in, yes. isn't it, of knowing that. So yeah. how did you find that out? Did you come to that by yourself or did that take therapy? Because that was locked away no, in your subconscious, wasn't it? I did have about it, yeah. Well, I kind of, it was fairly obvious that I was going for a type that reminded me of my dad. But I had to look at the fact that I was limiting my choices in therapy. Because mm. I really was, because it was almost like if a guy was sort of fair at all, you know, blue-eyed, blonde, it would almost feel like I can't... It, actually, strangely enough, I would then transfer that onto my younger brother and think that would be feel <laughs> odd, like I'm dating my brother. <laughs> so, you know, these things can be quite complex, but actually I feel like I've really, like, thrown out those sort of criteria yes. now yes. and widened... Because, um, you know, otherwise we just keep repeating patterns. We do, you know? we're just on that subconscious yeah. rail track mm. of doing the same old thing. Yeah. So in a way, and not that we're saying people shouldn't go to therapy, but today, yeah. a takeaway for, for the viewers watching could be, do you think this might work with you, that you just list your deal breakers, 
yeah. I was thinking this could be a little exercise, takeaway exercise. Yes, yeah, yeah. And you just looked at R, uh, one, two, three, where do they come from? Are some of them a bit faintly ludicrous that you might choose to take them off the list? Yeah, and I think writing it down is really powerful as well. Yeah. So you can really see it literally in black and white. So you know what you do want and you know exactly what you don't want. And then you kind of look at it again and say, well, what are the things I could really let go of? Like, yes. you know, the shoes, for example. Yes. Um, and you know, possibly the curly and hair. And possibly the curly hair. Well, I, got, I actually had an ex-boyfriend who helped me dress better. So sometimes other people people's steel breakers can make can sort of improve your yes, experience. Yes, absolutely. I mean, because it is one, that openness, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, and you say that again in your blogs and yes. vlogs, which we'll come on to in a minute because I yes. want you to talk about your pockets of wisdom, pockets of wisdom. Oh, yes. which I really, really love. Thank but you. I think we may have a question, so we will um, go to our first question. Just to say everyone out there uh, watching, please don't forget if you have a question, a comment or an experience to share, we would love to hear what have been your deal breakers in the past, what are they now? So just be sure to let us know in the comments below. Um, and what about your wish list? Isn't it, isn't it a good idea sometimes for singles that we need that wish list? That sort of turns it on its head. That's like what we were talking about, the deal makers, wasn't it? Yeah, that's your must-have. So I think this is where you have to create a very clear picture of what you want. So you risk going into a relationship and just reacting to what shows up. You know, the first person that maybe gives you a lot of attention or meets an emotional need well, in you. It's familiar to you. Yeah, it's familiar yeah. to you. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you know, often people will go into dating and if they haven't cleaned up their past, they haven't got the self-awareness, they haven't created a clear picture in their mind, in their imagination of what is healthy for them, what they want to create, mm -hmm. whether it's a short-term relationship, an explore, an adventure, mm -hmm. or something more long-term and committed. Um, and I think that it's knowing and having that clarity mm -hmm. that is really key. Yeah, clarity is always a kind of key word. Our research uh, shows a quarter of people are confused about what their type is and what I they sure. should be looking for. Right. So actually, you know, it kind of tallies with all the conversations we're having is that um, people obviously are confused because they're kind of like, if they have a type, they're sort of, it's not necessarily taking them in the right direction. So yes, yeah. yes. No, I could understand that you would have that confusion because that yeah. is the process, really. That's yeah. What. Okay, ladies, we do have our first question. So uh, this, oh, this is a really, really good one. Uh, classic. Jake asks, "I'm five foot seven mm. and single, and I'm really struggling to find someone who is willing to look past my height. I'd happily date someone taller than me, but how do I find someone who's happy to date a shorter man?" Jake, thank you so much for writing writing that in. Um, this is a massive mm. one, both, again, in my life experience and the mm. research I've been doing, mm. talking to my sons. One of my sons said, a friend of his who's five foot three, for weeks he never got a swipe on Tinder if he was honest mm. about his height. Mm. But then if he isn't honest about his height and he turns up to a date... Yeah, of course it's the, obvious, yeah. yeah. And so I just thought, apart, you know, I'm sort of shocked and appalled, and yet it's still, that's still clearly really deeply in our... I don't know, our cultural zeitgeist? Is it for I mean, women? What I do think, you two think about that? I think this is that? the thing. It's that we have this sort of, you know, cultural idea of what being a desirable is. Yes. And I think that if you're five foot seven mm. and you're, you, you have a belief that being five foot seven is not okay, it's not enough, yeah. in the construct, ah. societal construct, I think you, firstly you've got to look for role models, people who you admire who are five okay. foot seven. You know, and use those as your sort of mentors, you know, people that inspire you. You know, look, think of all the people. I mean, I watched Paul Simon on stage the other night. Yeah, he's quite he's tiny, isn't three. he? Oh, is he? Is he really? Yes. yes. God. Tom Cruise, so he's Tom fairly Cruise, tiny. He's very um, small. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, yeah. working with him years ago. So there are people, there are men out there, and it's really about how present you are with a female that's really going to get their attention. Mm. And really, I think, you know, you can't lie about it. You can't change it. So what's within your control? I agree with that. You know, what, it, what can you yes. do that's within your control? Yeah. yeah. So, Jack, you know, you, you let that bit go. And it only takes one person. You're only looking for one person, you know, if you're looking yes. for a long-term committed relationship who can see that. And there are plenty of shorter women out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's letting go ah. of these real, really rigid ideals that make us feel or can contribute to us feeling not good enough. Yes. And looking at our belief system and saying, well, actually, you know, that's not going to serve me. I'm not going to show up wholeheartedly if I meet someone, if I have this belief that, you know, I'm not enough at five foot seven. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, now that, I, Lee, I didn't think you were going to say that, actually. That's kind of really interesting advice. It's more about Jake himself yes, rather exactly. than us kind of yeah. criticising yeah, women really for being advice. too judgmental. Yeah. Because you also write, and again, I've written about this, about when you go on a date, mm. um, you, you've got to get out of your own head 
and yeah. be available yeah. and, and be a good listener, the active I, listener. Yeah. So if Jake, maybe we don't want to be critical at all, Jake, because it's obviously very difficult for you, but if you go on a date in your own head thinking, mm. I'm not enough, they're going to mm. say this, you're like waiting for them to reject and you. Also, it's you not going to work. Yeah, you, you set your, your brain... The way it works is if we start to imagine something, so if you're going out on a date, Jake, and you're thinking they're not going to like me, your brain will seek out all those things at times it can see, where it will, it will yes. basically, yes. um, you know, sort of pattern, pattern match, match to yeah. that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, before you go on a date, what can be really helpful is to use your imagination, which is our most powerful resource mm. if you yes. think about it. Mm. You know, everything that we have is we've created in our imagination mm. first, right? Mm. And often people will have an idea of how they should be in terms of desire, being desirable. Mm -hmm. So before you go out, you know, imagine very clearly and calmly how you could show up on that date, Jake. How could you leave someone better off for having met you? What could you take away from that? What could you learn from being in that environment with that person from a human perspective? Because I think in dating, it's very easy to project and to fantasise about how things are going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're going to fit yeah. into this sort of social construct of what, you know, being desirable and beautiful is. Um, and I think it's looking beyond that yeah, and looking yeah. at your own, your own belief system and really coming, you know, I'm a big believer in coming in from a much more human perspective of, of yeah. one human being meeting another human being and you happen to be male and female. Yeah. Because that's what it comes down to. The that's end, what it comes course. down to. And if you can be present with someone and listen, there's a huge amount of yes, value in that. Yes, yes. And that is, again, about not hang, being hung up on your own insecurities Absolutely. in order to be available. Totally. Rachel, what would you say well, to I'm, Jen? I'm still... I feel like I've had a warm psychological cuddle from Leah. It's so lovely, that mm. advice, and it's so sort of tailored. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and it made me pause for thought and think, yeah, it, it is about having a meaning, meaningful experience with somebody mm. and not necessarily thinking about, you know, do, will I tick this box, will they tick that? Because you want to yes. take something away from that time together. Yeah, um, yeah. So I'm and really that's liking human, that. that's a human point. I think with deal breakers, you know, we're being slightly humorous about this. Yeah, we are. But when you look at it at a deeper level, mm. um, I think it is about not going in with the expectation. Yes. Going yes. in from a place of appreciation rather than what am I going to get from this person? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, what are they going to think of me? You know, what can I give to this person mm. in this short period of time I'm with them? Yeah. What human exchange can we have that will both open us up to a new way of perhaps seeing dating or relationships or in interacting yeah. with each other? And, you know, when we're dating, as we're exploring whether someone is right for us. I think it's a really warm and human way of going about it rather yeah. than having tons of checklists. But you have your clear picture, but going in from a place of appreciation. Yeah, no, lovely. That's gorgeous for everything, really. Mm. I would just say on a, a, maybe a practical note for Jake. Mm. There's something about, again, we were talking about the digital world and digital mm. dating, all the swiping. Mm. That does go into privilege the visual and these pieces of information. Yeah. So I think, Jake, like, you know, what, what we call in real life, IRL, it's like, get out there. This is, we've mm. said this in mm. other episodes, but mm. it's kind of like um, where you're passionate, where you're at your best, sort of like you were saying, Lee. Yeah. Uh, um, go to activities, meet women in real life where they will see beyond your your height because it's irrelevant about what kind of person you are. That you well, know, you're confident people, don't exactly. they? Love people exactly. who are in the flow, in their zone, doing what they love. Yeah, you know, that's, yeah. What, yeah. that's what attracts people to exactly. you. Your passion yeah. and your enthusiasm, uh, and that's when you're not being self-conscious totally. and not thinking about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Jake, I would say that's from the panel of experts here. It's uh, so think of some role models, go and meet people in real life, and, and also really those women who are going to judge you on your height. You don't really want to be with them anyway. You want someone who values you for the precious and unique person you are. Mm. Um, so more questions, please. Do you have a burning question? Um, do you agree with what we're saying, our assessments? You can totally disagree. Write in in the comments section. Uh, we'll be taking more of your questions after this look at one of eHarmony's love stories. I mean, I was scared to death of dating. I looked at what I really wanted to get out of life, and that was when I decided to go on eHarmony and try, and try a different method. I had been living overseas and had recently moved back, and all my friends were either married or in long-term relationships, so eHarmony seemed to be the good way to go. I'm Martin. I'm Mawena. We live in Bristol, and we've been together eight years. I liked the matching process, so I felt that anybody that I met would have invested some time and effort into it. The whole process of going through that questionnaire really had you think about who it was you wanted to meet as well. It got me thinking about what I wanted in a partner rather than what somebody might want in me. And that was a big shift. I just thought you were too good to be true, really. Mm. Yeah, I had this wish list and then 
kind of secret secondary wish list and yeah there's still things on there that he does now and I'm like oh that's off that secondary secret wish list that no one knows about. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't have approached you in the pub I'd have been scared to death <laughs> but the, the whole eHarmony process just it's such a gentle gentle approach you get to know really deep things about each other quite early on. I think anybody looking in could see that we're happy and content. Something in that match has worked here, I'm pretty sure of that. I think eHarmony does make happy relationships, yeah, certainly made one here. Yeah. <laughs>
fine, you know, you yeah, can, you keep can it split simple. it, keep it simple. Yes. yes. And then as time progresses, you can talk about, you know, who pays for what. And I think, you know, we're, most women work, they have their own incomes. Yeah. You know, it's great to sort of treat your partner sometimes, your boyfriend, if it develops into that. And some, and depending on the type of man, some men like to pay more. You mm -hmm. know, it it's can be a status thing sometimes so I think you just it's something you can discuss but in the it's early not a deal days, breaker is it no, not an early day you yeah. know not on an early date I think yeah. you keep it really simple yeah. I think also the idea of um, going for this first date and again you like you would say but opening your mind and kind of making some allowances because yes. I think often I mean I know we're talking to women and, and men here today mm. but you know um, we can be we, that very rigidness about thinking he should be you talk about your fantasy figure mm. and women can often put that into men rather than thinking they are just as nervous and anxious probably Absolutely. as you are it's because we're all human beings yeah. a human perspective so kind of if someone because when I looked at this psychology today research the number one one of the number one deal breakers is being rude to a waiter and of course we'd mm. all agree it feels like yeah of course but someone could be sort of so tense and rigid, they, they sort realize. of dismiss away. Mm. Yeah, and I kind mm. of think, can we have a little bit of wiggle room A bit of leeway. And mm. maybe start a little conversation about that, or mm. I don't know, I'll be all for giving people second chances, really. Mm. Do you, mm. What do you think of that? I, I think people are doing their best. I think dating for some people, some people are really good at dating and they're confident daters. Yes. And yes. other people do struggle, they get more anxious, and uh, you know, it can depend on how attracted they are to the person as well. It's sometimes the more you're attracted to your date, the less. You, you can, can relax. Distracting. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the so, more attracted you are, you can, yeah. you can sort of sideswiped by a can be yes, emotionally at, yes, the, or sort of polished <laughs> manners. I, I actually, you know. yeah, I tend to go quiet ah. if I'm really attracted to somebody, and it takes me by yes. surprise. It's like an ambush, mm. and yes. suddenly going from being normally a bit of a chatterbox, mm. I sort of become a bit like. Mm, so then yeah, someone yeah. might, yeah. if someone's being very judgmental with their own deal breakers, they might say to you, oh, she's a bit of an ice maiden. She's yeah. a bit kind exactly. of quiet. And, I can be. And probably. actually you were paralysed because they were so good looking. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. Ellen, I hope that's enough kind of guidance. We didn't mean to be rude about the um, not using should, but if you start when you notice yourself using a should, change it to a could, that is potentially really life changing. Um, so Lily asks, I know it sounds shallow, well I think this whole topic can potentially be quite shallow, but my boyfriend uh, has recently grown a beard and I hate it. Can I ask him to shave it off or should I just drop subtle hints that I'm not keen? Okay, hello, this, thank you very much for that Lily. Um, I'm a big believer. If the, if the boyfriend wants to have a beard, that's his right. He, if he wants to have a beard, he wants to have a beard. But you can easily say, you know, I find it more attractive without a beard. But then you'll let it go, you know, because it's his choice. Yeah. Well, know. after saying it once, let it go. Yeah, you know, and just and you know, reinforce. If maybe if you see a picture without the beard, say, oh, you know, I love that look on you. It's great. Yeah. So you're reinforcing in a subtle way what it was like without the beard. But, That's you know, a good idea. I think, good. you know, rather yeah. than sort of saying get rid of the beard, get rid of the beard, because, you know, people need a certain amount of autonomy and freedom. You know, it's, it, we, it's a Absolutely. need we all have. Well, shaming and, people's not a good idea. Yeah, either. and it doesn't reinforce, you know, and build up the emotional bank mm. account if you're saying to your partner, oh, I don't like that beard, get rid of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can subtly say, you know, for me, I preferred it without. Um, but it's your face. Or even I, um, a friend of mine who hated facial hair, she would say something about like, oh, I love kissing your smooth Absolutely. face. So they something associate positive. Yes, yeah, so associate it with, a, with an experience. Yeah. You know, a positive experience like that. Yeah. yeah. Because it's, it's like you said, shaming. It's like, to me, yeah. the toxic trio is, you know, naming, shaming, blaming. Yeah. And as soon as we begin to get into those, Disaster and we're, telling, we're trying to control people, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, because we all know we hate to be told what to do and yeah. be ashamed about any... Thing, whether it's about our appearance or our behaviour. Yeah, absolutely. And the so, thing is, if you inflict what you think is the way the person should look upon them and they're not comfortable, you're not going to have an authentic connection anyway. No. Because they're going to be kind of stressed by it at some level and, and not feel like they are themselves. So mm. I agree, the positive mm. approach is a good one. Yeah. Mm. And I have to say, to beard or not to beard. <laughs> it's just came off the top. I love it. Very good, Rachel. This is your role, the stats and the puns. <laughs> I think also, like, my boyfriend grew a beard and I loved it. I thought it was the most gorgeous thing. And then he shaved it off. And, you know, for me, I want to build him up all the time. I want to sort of say what I appreciate about him. Because mm. that, again, stacks the emotional bank account. Mm. It's great with or without a beard. I love it when he has stubble on a beard. But then equally, there comes a time when he wants to shave it off and it's, it's his yeah. right. So yeah. I say, you know, oh, I love the beard. But he's also great without it. 
Yeah. Because also in that long-term relationship, which I imagine you know most people who come to eHarmony and maybe watching the show Ooh. are aiming for, you're going to change your persona, Absolutely. you're going to change your look, you're going to experiment with things, and we're all going to end up kind of grey-haired, overweight little old people. And that's where the compatibility well, comes actually, yeah. in, the what's inside. It's the core values but, and personality traits that really, mm. in the end, define the long-lasting happiness in the relationship. Mm. I mean, that are the, those are the things to consider when we're predicting whether a relationship will work. Mm. And so, yes, of course, we all have preferences physically, but actually mm. the things that are going to give you happiness longer term are having the same outlook upon life, the same moral compass, yeah. the same sense of humour, the cultural yeah. reference, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I think what's really interesting is what one person, the word one person might use might mean something different to someone else. Uh, so if yeah. someone yeah. says, you know, um, it's really important to me that I'm respected. Well, what would be happening when you're respected? Yes, that's a very good point. What is actually yeah. going on? Yeah. And it's an interesting exercise. If you, have a, if you put a, um, nine squares in a box and put in the values that are most important, important to you, and then your partner puts in the values that are most important to them, and then you ask each other, what would be happening if I was respectful towards you? Yes. What, how would you experience that? What, yes. would ha what would be happening if I was loving towards you? How would you experience yes. that? Yes. How would that show up for you? Mm. Because, you know, yeah. very often someone says, um, you know, I gave them everything that I have. Yeah, but yeah, You didn't yeah, necessarily yeah. give them what they wanted or in a language they understood. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so you know, absolutely. It's, it's, you know, it's love languages, isn't it? Yes. And also it's that coaching thing of it, it, almost like, is it specific? Is it measurable? Yes. Because yeah. if it's saying, oh, I want more happiness, I want more love, anything. I want like, what yeah, what's going to happen? They tell you what they don't want. They often don't tell you what they want. And yes. it's like a sort of guessing game. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. We've got these good messages today mm. about positivity, about turning that negatives into positive language. How can you say something, turn it on its head yeah, totally. and express it in yeah. a positive way? Yeah, because and also just on a neuroscience level, you're going to get more out of that. When you start yeah. thinking yeah. about what you do want and start focusing on how that's going to show up, uh, then you, you have a much a much clearer path of how you're going to create it. Yeah. Mm. And if yeah, you're constantly yeah. thinking, well, I don't want this, I don't want that, I don't want that, you're going to start seeing all the things you don't want. Yes. Yeah. So, and you know, that communication between couples, especially as they're evolving more and developing from dating maybe into a relationship mm -hmm. and having that clarity and understanding what each other's values are and how that is going to work and on an everyday level, mm -hmm. yeah. that's how you grow the relationship. Yeah, and I'm absolutely. all for, you know, many of the people I see might have problems with um, push-pull relationships or relationships where they're on, you know, being emotionally hijacked and they're automatically responding to things. But relationships need to amplify our experience of life and grow through them, not close us down. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. why we, we, we were in them. And I think that if we're not, that's why we go back to being clear when we go in them of what we want. Then we've got a better chance of actually developing it and being with someone who we can grow with. Yeah, I think a lot of us fall into relationships, and particularly with all the sort of online casual dating sites and apps, it's very easy to just suddenly find yourself six months down the line in a relationship with someone who's a bit of a stranger, fundamentally. You don't really get each mm. other or know each other. You just have this chemistry mm. that has yeah. seen you yeah, through yeah, yeah, yeah. the first few months. And it's yeah. been, and of course, sex is a great distractor, and you can get high for a long time on that. But at some point, that plateaus, and that's when you need exactly what you're talking about, yeah. you build up these yeah. other things. And how many times have we heard that, you know, the sex is great, but that just doesn't mean you have to be with the person in the long term. What do no. we all say here? That, you know, chemistry, chemistry with Without compatibility doesn't really generally get you very far. No, you need Whereas both. You need both. Yeah. But if it push came to shove, the compatibility probably kind of yeah. has that edge because the chemistry is going to change and where yeah. Uh, the yeah. bit. Yeah. So you know, people. I think that it's very easy to just say you know chemistry is something that just happens. But over time, it you know, it, it, it's you, you cultivate mm. it. Desire, you cultivate yes. desire. Yes. And you know, it's not something that just well, I've gone off you now. Well, what 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 part of yourself do you need to reignite? in order to feel more attracted to that person. Because often we withdraw because there's something going on with us. Yes. We might withdraw because we don't feel good enough, we might feel a bit overweight, or we might feel we're not successful enough, or whatever that might be. But I'm a big believer in that with you know, desire. You, you cultivate it. You, you, you create an environment where you can have desire. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think you get couples who have a couple of kids, and all of a sudden it's all you know, domesticity. is a killer of passion sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's really about thinking, actually, I can cultivate this. And just because I'm with someone for a long time and nurture it, it isn't something that just happens. Yeah. We have to focus on it and build it. And also being a bit gendered, but, you know, I used to run workshops with women and talk about often our myth is a bit sort of like the, the knight in shiny armour. We expect really a man to turn us on mm. and make us feel sexy. Mm. So this idea for women of, like, how do you get a sexy mind? 
Yes. Kind of like, how do you feel desirable? Almost like, how do you turn yourself on? Yeah. And bring yeah, yeah. that to the party, rather Absolutely. than being passive and then being angry when it's gone. And he's yeah. not doing that to me. Yes. It's a very passive stance. And I think yes. that, again, like the height differences, maybe, yes. that still exists yeah. today, very much, yeah. really. And understanding what it is that can generate that emotion in yourself. Because whatever happens in a relationship is essentially our emotion that we're generating. Well, they're someone a mirror, is the, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, someone is you know, triggering that. But it's our, we're generating it. So yeah. in terms of sort of you know become feeling desirable it's that playfulness it's that feminine energy that we all have you know and it's whether it's yeah. music can be a great state changer yeah you're putting on a great tune you know dancing freeing up that energy within you know yourself well, yeah yes, I find yes, even yes. from a platonic single perspective I feel more attractive and more I have probably more Mm. potential sexual energy that I'd give off when I say been to my beloved gym and had a really good oh, session with yeah, music yeah, yeah. or I'm doing something I love or yeah. I've gone you know kayaking yes. down the river somewhere yes. on the weekend Absolutely. so I really go into myself and it's like I feel I am my best energy. self yes. yeah and yeah, because yeah, yeah. You, you, you when you, you move yeah we can change our emotional states so yeah talking about desirability you yeah. know movement dancing That's so true. doing something dancing that we love. is amazing for that yeah dancing is fantastic it's very yeah. freeing mm. so so Zumba is so popular Popular. And also, yes. you don't have to be an expert. Yes. Yeah. Makes you feel yeah. like a nightclub, makes you feel like you're yeah. in camaraderie and there's, camaraderie and there's bonding. But it's also yeah. using your memory and again your imagination to think back of times when you have felt desirable when you were in the bedroom with your partner and you were having a sexy yes. time. Yes. R yes. Remember that experience. How did it feel? What did you smell? What did you see? What did you hear? Mm, mm, mm. You conjure it up because, again, mm. you're going to start generating that emotion in your body. Well, the best example of that, in a way, is for instant sort of libido boost. It's often when people go away for a weekend and they're in a hotel room. Yes. And they're yes. Suddenly, yes. A, suddenly they're like, they're sort of almost animalistic. You know, it's, mm. a, yeah. it's a sort of cliche, yeah. but it's true. Yeah. And it's, it's the true. environment. Yeah. It's the it's same people. The environment. But also, yeah. like you say, this memory and these sensual yeah. memories yeah. are different parts of the brain. Yes. Yes. They're both quite into neuroscience. Yes. But it will light up a different bit of the brain yeah. that remembers when you say sort of like visualise yes. a time when you were turned on with your partner and you were having great sex yeah. and, and get back in touch with mm. that to bring back those feelings. It's that part of yourself that maybe has been forgotten mm. about yes. on the way. Mm. Has gone a bit dormant. Yeah, and then instead what happens is we focus on the other person and say, well, you know, they're not doing enough. You know, yes. they, they need to do more it, to make me feel this. It's the old blaming again. It's the blaming, old blaming. blaming you, know, you point the finger and the three fingers pointing back at you. Yes. But with this comes a power, you know, of, of learn, knowing ourselves and knowing how to use our resources, mm. you know, like imagination, memory, mm, mm. how we change our emotional state. You know, now, we, sorry to interrupt yeah. you, Lee, but talking about, because we're, we're running out of time, coming mm. to the end of this week's program because it's been so fast well, I could curious, listen for hours. hasn't it? I know the woman but that's what I wanted to come to you because I wanted to give a plug to you yes. on your website you have this thing called pockets of wisdom I do yeah that I thought were wonderful Thank and you. I think um, viewers have a look at Lee Pycroft's pockets of wisdom your, your website is yes. leepycroft.co.uk I've got look, hey, on, on I've Instagram got... I watch them ah and yeah. they're like these I amazing pockets little one yeah. minute yeah. videos so just before we go today yeah. I thought it'd be great as mm. a kind of as a take home giveaway yes. to our viewers our lovely viewers um to me my kind of two favorites really that i thought were because i use this a lot with the 7-eleven breathing yes and maybe that one that's the self self hug self right. yeah, so yeah. i think we've just got time for yes, that absolutely. can we just on, show no, us soothing okay. So, so 7-Eleven yeah. is fantastic because it works with the body's nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic nervous system gears us up for action. The parasympathetic nervous system calms us down. Now, when you make your out-breath longer, it commands the parasympathetic nervous system to go into a state of relaxation. So how, this is how it works. Should we all you do have it, to, Rachel? You you have to, yeah. And this is great if you're going out before a date and you feel nervous. Yeah. This is how you can come out of your emotional brain. Mm -hmm. And as you do this, you calm, your body will calm down, then you'll open up the logical part of your brain. Okay. So you put your hands on your tummy and you want to imagine it sort of coming, bulging out like a balloon. You breathe into your nose for the count of seven. You hear the tummy rumbling. Now you keep your shoulders down, let it balloon out and then you breathe out for the count That's of 11. Very long time. Now, if you can't do 7-11, you could do 5-7. What I think is helpful... I don't breathe well, deeply enough. To be honest, 3-5, I, I say, yeah. my clients. Yeah. But what you can do is, I think what helps is to breathe as if you're breathing out through a straw. So you yeah. breathe in and then because that will extend the out breath. Now you do a few rounds of those, perhaps with your eyes shut, and what it does, it brings you back into the present moment, mm -hmm. and then you can start to use your imagination as what, what is gonna be happening on this date? How am I gonna show up? How can I leave this person better off for having met? What's the outcome I'm looking for? You know, to come away feeling 
you know, I've really learned something. It actually works. It does. It works see. instantly. I mean, it's, 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 yeah. it's like going it's, into a sort of cocoon. It's lovely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and it switches one. off the amygdala past Absolutely. the brain. It's it's got got one minute, so let's quickly the self-soothing. It's fantastic <laughs> if you're feeling a bit scattered, yep. a bit little all over the place in your head. You put your right hand under your arm and put your left hand around yourself like this and you basically just hold yourself. And this gives a feeling of being contained. Now, some people, some clients I have prefer it down here. If they get to sort of feel a hollow feeling, it's like a self cuddle. Self cuddle. It just yeah. feels yeah. contained and grounding. Yes. Yeah. So this is another great way of just utilising your resources again in order for you to ground yourself and feel calm. Yeah and Lee, show up wholeheartedly. That is fantastic. I feel you have given two precious little gifts to our viewers today. Thank and you. if you want more to see um, Lee Prycroft, look on her website. She's got, I'm not hundreds, but loads of these little pockets of wisdom. Yeah, and on Instagram as well. As Lee Instagram Prycroft. as well. Yeah. Uh, so I'm afraid that is all we have got time for today. If you didn't get to, if we didn't get to your question, I'm really sorry. We had so much going on. We will be back live at 12.30 next Thursday when our, I'm sorry, Tuesday, 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 when our topic will be sexual compatibility. So that's quite a hey, juicy one. So if you have any questions or comments on that topic or anything else related to love, dating and relationships, get in touch now via Facebook or Twitter at eHarmony UK. And tune in next week. Have a great week and goodbye from us all. Goodbye.